Yeah, so that's a little preview or a little wrap up of what happened this week while we were here with Summer Bible Adventure and we had a great time with the kids and was learning more about Joseph and the things that God gave him while he was in Egypt. And today we read um, uh, three parables of Jesus that uh, focus on the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven can be a hard concept to understand. It can be something that is not easy for us to wrap our minds around and wrap our heads around exactly what it is. And many times in our language today and poems and stories, we use metaphors to help us understand um, some of the things that we have a hard time understanding, like sometimes love and hope. I remember when I was in middle school, my music teacher, he had all of us lay our heads on our desk and close our eyes and listen to the song. And as we listened to the song, he wanted us to allow the images to um, play around in our mind and to really think about what the song was saying and the images the song was using. The song that he played for us was The Rose by Leanne Rhymes. The first verse of this song says, Some say love, it is a river that drowns the tender reed. Some say love, it is a razor that leaves your soul to bleed. Some say love, it is a hunger, an endless aching need. But I say love, it is a flower. And you, it's only seed. The song goes on to really expand on the metaphor of the flower and really in some ways tell a parable of how the flower can be an image of love. And just as in the song, there are several different images, the river, the razor, the hunger, and the flower. Our parables today have three different images for the kingdom of God. A treasure, a merchant, and a net. We're going to take some time to take a closer look at each one of these images and how they relate to the kingdom of heaven and how they could relate to us today in this world. The first parable says the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure. A treasure that when found, it fills you with joy, fills you with so much joy that you're willing to sell everything you have so that you can purchase the field that you find it in and obtain that treasure for yourself. And the kingdom of heaven, when we find it, when we see it alive in the world, when we see the love of God, when we see the people showing compassion and caring for each other, we are filled with joy. We feel with so much joy that we're willing to sacrifice. We're willing to sacrifice of ourselves so that we can be part of this kingdom as well so that we can also show joy and love and kindness to others. And as I look throughout the congregation, I see many of you who have sacrificed of yourselves for the kingdom, for each other. As a community, you've sacrificed to build a community center, which now is here to help the youth on the hilltop. You've sacrificed to buy three houses so that you could rent them out as affordable housing to people who are in need of houses and in need of affordable place to stay. There are individuals here who have sacrificed for the youth on the hilltop so that they can have a kind and loving people to go to when sometimes they might not have it in their own lives. You sacrifice for each other. When one of you is in need or hurting, you're willing to offer food, prayer, or just visit and sit with somebody. We sacrifice to show the love of God to the world, to the community around us, because we see the kingdom of God and it fills us with so much joy. In the second parable, it says the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant. Now these two parables, many times, and what I've read and what I've heard in the past is 
They're interpreted the same way many times. It's like, well, we're searching for the kingdom of heaven and we sacrifice for the kingdom of heaven. But this parable says the kingdom of heaven is the merchant who buys pearls. And this merchant finds his pearl of great value and the merchant gives everything that he has, sells everything so that they can buy this pearl of great value. The kingdom of heaven, God has sacrificed for us. God has sacrificed everything for us. So this parable is not the same. It's a mere image. It tells us that while we are sacrificing for God, God is also sacrificing for us. In fact, God sacrificed for us before we found the kingdom of heaven, as Paul said. Jesus came down to this earth because God wanted a relationship with humanity. God created humanity and saw humanity and realized the humanity can show the love of God to the world. And so Jesus came down, he was born, he was a baby, he wasn't able to care for himself, he had to have his mother take care of him. He grew up to be a toddler, as a toddler, struggling to try to figure out where the boundaries were and what you can and cannot do. As a child, enjoying life and playing in the fields. He was a teenager who struggled to find his way in the world. In Luke, it tells a story, in one of the Gospels, it tells a story of how Jesus went to the temple at 12 and told his parents, shouldn't I be about my father's business? Amen. Jesus was struggling to find his way, but it wasn't until he was about 30 that he became a prophet and that he began to go around and teach people about the kingdom of heaven. So as a man, he was a carpenter, and he worked. Jesus lived a life as we live our lives so that God can show to us how much he cares for us and how much he wants to be part of who we are and part of our lives. And then Jesus was condemned. He was arrested by the Roman government. He was put in prison. He was put on trial. He was falsely accused. And he was killed. So Jesus gave up everything for us. Amen. And now Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, advocating for us and saying, God, I know how hard it is to be human. I know how hard it is to live the life that they are living on earth. <coughs> but God, they are precious. They are like these precious pearls. Oh and God, help them and walk alongside them. So in the first parable, it talks about how we sacrifice for God. The second parable talks about how God has sacrificed everything for us. This third parable is a little different. It says the kingdom of heaven is a net. This net goes behind the boat and it just grabs anything that's in its path. It grabs the old shoes, the tires, the junk plastic, the good fish, the bad fish. It just grabs everything. Um, in some ways, um, I thought I thought of um, some a story that I heard a couple years ago when they were talking about the tuna industry and how the tuna industry had been catching dolphins in their nets. And um, it became a big deal. People started talking about it. And so many in the tuna industry changed their methods and changed the way that they catch tuna so that there aren't dolphins in the field so that the dolphins don't get caught in the nets. But this net, it caught everything. It didn't, it didn't discriminate between good or bad or something that was not worth anything or something that was worth of value that could be sold. We have good and bad in us. We have the evil and the righteous in us. The world has the evil and the righteous in it. And this parable says the kingdom of heaven gathers all of that. It gathers the good and the bad. But 
Once the net is pulled ashore, the angels come and they sort out the good and the bad. Amen. I know that there's been times in my life that I've struggled, that I've <coughs> cried tears, um, in many ways, weeping and gnashing of teeth, I would describe some of the situations I've been in. And I know they were hard, but I know looking back, those times gave me compassion. Those times gave me an understanding of what other people go through when they are struggling. Those times gave me something that I didn't have before. Those times helped to bring out the good in me, helped to bring out what was righteous in me, and helped to get rid of some of the bad that was in me. That's what this parable is about. The kingdom of heaven is like a net that gathers the good and the bad. It gathers us as we are. And then God comes and works with us and helps us to change, to become better people, to become the type of people who do show the love of God, who do show the compassion of God to the world. Each and every one of us have our own struggles and our own trials, but we all know that in the midst of those struggles and trials, we have become better people. We have become more understanding, more caring, and more kind. Each one of these parables gives us a little different picture of what the kingdom of heaven is. The kingdom of heaven is something that fills us with so much joy that we're willing to sacrifice for it. The kingdom of heaven is something that God is willing to sacrifice for us so that we can be in relationship with God and so that God can show the love of God to the rest of the world through us. And the kingdom of heaven has the good and the bad. But God is able to sort through the good and the bad. God is able to help us to become better people throughout our lives. And as we continue to work and strive to show the love of God to others, we become more and more compassionate, more and more kind, and more and more like Jesus. May the kingdom of God continue to grow in you, in your hearts, and in your lives today.